from Wiley East High School, home of the Raiders. It's time for Scott Baseball 2012. Tonight, Highland Park takes on Wiley East as District 10 4A play continues. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us on HPTV. I'm Art Finley, along with Miles Dunklin and our man Jonathan Cantor back with us tonight. And uh, a big game last night, Miles, uh, for Highland Park to knock off Rockwall and get back in the thick of the playoff hunt, wasn't it? Well, not only a big game at, at uh, Scotland Yard, but a big game for this Wiley East Club as they fell to McKinney North. And uh, so the Scots are now tied in, in at four and four in district play with, the, with this Wiley East squad. And so this would go a long way into uh, uh, helping the Scots make, this, make the playoffs. And uh, we'll hope Highland Park can uh, plate some runs tonight, Jonathan. Uh, there was a one to nothing shutout the first meeting at Scotland Yard. A pretty impressive performance from Zach Freeman. And I believe he's getting a nod tonight. Yeah, it was definitely an impressive performance by Zach Freeman last time, but this is a different Scots team in terms of confidence. I think after facing Point. Jake Thompson and being able to score two runs against him, that's really changed the mindset of this team. They've been a little bit more aggressive at the play, but still getting into those fastball counts. And I just think overall they're much more confident. Scots took advantage of Rockwall mistakes last night. And Got a great pitching performance from Matt Wilson, who went the first time against Wiley. He struck out 10, but a one to nothing shutout. And Zach Freeman stymied Highland Park, held the Scots to just three hits. And how about that pitching performance by Matt last night? Going into the seventh inning, still had that no-no going. Almost uh, got the no-hitter. Uh, Helped settle for the, uh, the district win. Big, uh, big momentum builder for the Scots as they go down the second, uh, this back half. Play. Big Will Nickel will start tonight for Highland Park, and boy, Will Nickel was outstanding in Rockwall Heath, helping the Scots knock off the Hawks and really turn the season around. It'll be Mark Gottsacker to lead it off here in the top of the first inning. Gottsacker, Aaron Falgu, and Dylan May to face Zach Freeman. Gottsacker, 392 on the season. Yeah, he's been outstanding yesterday, got on base again. Scoring runs, that's what he does. And he'll try and set the table here for Highland Park. And he looks at a strike from Freeman, and my advice is to get that ball uh, toward right field right now because the first baseman, second baseman, right fielder are looking into a brutal sun as we go a little bit before 7.30 here. No one to got Sacker job as a senior captain. Game number nine of the 10 4 a season. Big day. Get out. Back, 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 and it'll drop at the wall right into the sun, and Gottsacker's going to score. It's an RBI double for McDay. The right fielder, Brubaker, could not make a play, and I can't. And I do believe the sun was a factor right there. The ball almost got out of here for McDay now has tripled and doubled in his last two at bat. Well, how about a 14-game hitting streak for the senior? Bring it on. He's hit in all but two ball games all season. I mean, that's unbelievable for a guy that plays every single day, picking up where he left off last night with that big triple. He's pretty full happy, but it works when you get that ball down that right field line. And the beauty of a two-out RBI. Davis Rolfe to lead it off for Highland Park here in the top of the third inning. Rolfe 0 for 2 last night. First varsity action of the season. Did have an outstanding web gym out in right field. It's funny right now that Scott's uh, don't have a, uh, a helmet for matching his jersey numbers. He's wearing number seven on the helmet and number 20 on the back of his uniform. That doesn't matter. Looks at a strike from Freeman, sends this into the gap, and how about it? First varsity base hit for Davis Rolf. Gets things started for Highland Park here in the third. This is huge, as now you give Mark Gottsacker, one of the best hitters on the, probably the best you hitter bet. on the team, and that bat with a man on, but puts Freeman in the stretch, just keeping the pressure on him is huge. And some confidence building right there for Rolf, you now he can compete at this level. Normally, Scott's like to sacrifice in the situation, but with Falgu on deck and Gottsacker is play, I don't think they'll opt to take the, bands, the, the bat out of the hands of their best player. But I could be wrong. Third baseman is playing in, though. Listen, with the infield in, it can be very easy to get it past them. 
Sends this Sends into the center slot. field, and we'll see if Rolf will take off. Brubaker there, and here comes Rolf. And the throw up the line, and the runners advance. It's two to nothing. Highland Park give Dylan May an RBI. That was a good jump by Rolf off a of third base. We know uh, Brubaker has an arm from the last meeting. So that was a good job by uh, Davis Rolf. And Dylan. Exactly what you want to do if you're Dylan May. That's just as good of a hit and uh, a great piece of situational hitting. He knows he just got to put the ball on the bat, the bat on the ball, and he does it again and delivers. Now he gives Chris McDade an opportunity with a man on third. McDade doubled to right field his first trip. Sends this to second base, and he'll be thrown out to end the inning. But the Scots strike again for another run. And after two and a half, it's two to nothing, Highland Park. And Griffin Gall take the free pass, and the Scots with something cooking here in the fourth. Runners at first and second, nobody out. That's a huge A-B right there. That's as big as any at bat. Uh, we'll see, uh, just you know, be able to, to battle back from falling down on the count. Obviously continue to put more pressure on Freeman. Give the guys behind him a chance to really break this game open. Get a rally going, two guys on, no out. And tire out Freeman a little bit. Matthew Milburn take his second at bat of the ball game. Utley at second, Gall at first. Nobody out. Freeman out of the stretch. And Milburn just out in front of that. Was going to lay down the bunt. Scott Runners on the move. Nobody out here in the fourth inning. And that's hit out into left field. Hughes comes through. Scoring on the play is Utley. And Gall will stop at Hughes third. will take second. Heads up, base running right there as the ball gets away. And David Hughes coming through in the clutch. It's three to nothing, Scotts. I love the heads up base running by David Hughes there. The ball got away from the cutoff man. He advanced after having a great single making it a three nothing game. Two and one the count now on Gottsacker. One run in, two outs here in the top of the fourth inning. I hit him. And Gottsacker will take his base at first, and the bases are loaded for Aaron Falgu. Freeman is just not helping himself out right now. I mean, that's the last thing you want to do, hit, hit a guy to load the bases here when you're already down by three runs. Arguably, a uh, smart move to put to put Mark on, to put a, to put on a force at every base, and uh, uh, but he certainly did not want to hit him right there. He was trying to get back in the at-bat. Well, Falgu doubled his last trip. Down the left field line. RBI opportunity right here. It's getting a little chilly here out in Wiley. Yeah, wind's starting to pick up a little bit. And there it is, strike three, and that will do it. But the Scots strike again. Couple of hits, and they have a three to nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Challenges him with a fastball up on by the letters that time. And Nickel stays ahead in the count here. Now you look to change the eye level. It's be difficult to play that softball game. Yeah, it seems I mean, like they've been hitting right, everything incoming. over there. <laughs> Keep wondering if we need to be looking out for softballs flying behind our heads here. Yeah. He went up and in with the fastball. Let's see if he goes down and away. 0-2 pitch on the way. That's low, and again, Falco showing his leather behind the plate. Handled, Takes that pitch out of the dirt. He handled that bounce like it was nothing. There's a reason why that guy hasn't committed an error all year. One and two, the count. Ground ball. Milburn oh. with a long throw, and he makes the play. What a beauty. That shows the value of having a strong arm on the left side of the infield. That was not a hard hit ball. It went all the way to the back of the uh, infield dirt, but he was still able to get him. Trying to work out his, his arm there. 
you know, when it gets cold like this, it is, it's tough for these guys to get loose. But once you get warm, you're able to kind of stay warm. Jacob Hosking at third base for the Raiders. And Nickel ahead of Freeman 0-2. I'm impressed so far with how Will Nickel is dealing with adversity, really for the first time this game. This is the first time they've even had a runner on third. So this is some good pitching from Will Nickel. We're seeing. Look for the breaking ball right here. He's got a couple devastating out pitches. Brubaker tries to take second. And he is dead in the water, and that will end the inning. Great job by Nickel to stay still on the mound, and he gets the base runner, and that does it for the Raiders. They are gone in the sixth. We'll go to the seventh inning. The Scots in front, three to nothing of the seventh inning and up for Highland Park will be Davis Rolfe. Been impressed, now this will be Halpin right here, pinch hitting. All right, Hunter Halpin getting his first at bat tonight. Three to nothing, Highland Park lead here. You Big know, Halpin, game in 10-4A. Halpin really hasn't gotten many starts of late, but he's really one of the key players in the team in terms of the first guy off the bench uh, to pinch hit and also one of the key pinch runners the Scots have utilized all season. Just as important a part of this team as anybody else. Freeman still on the hill. Hunter Halpin delivers with a leadoff single to left field, no doubt about it. On cue right there, Halpin. There we go, and that's another thing that's contributed to this win streak. It seems like the pinch hitting for the Scots has been so good. We saw, of course, Jackson Hoosier get that get the uh, game-winning run in against Rockwall Heath, and that's more good pitch hitting. Well, add to those numbers. That's a shot to the shortstop, May. Safe at first base, it's four to nothing. Oliver couldn't handle the throw. Well, that was a really nice play by the shortstop. Give him credit for making it as close as it was, but. Oliver not able to make the scoop, and Dylan May has himself another RBI base hit. I think I'm going to appoint myself the official scorer and give Dylan an RBI single right there. No question. Next up for Highland Park will be Wiley High School. Get a chance to get another revenge game against these Wiley schools. You bet. Oh, and Nichols ahead in the count now. It's 0-2, and, and Highland Park's just, they came out here ready to play, and it showed from the very beginning of the game, and Miles, I like what you said about, you know, the only sound we could hear at one point was the Highland Park chatter in the dugout. Everybody involved, and there it is. Nichols gonna end the ball game in style with a strikeout, his seventh of the game, and the Scots win it here. Four to nothing, the final count. The Scots four runs on nine hits, no errors, and just a terrific performance. How about back-to-back -back two hitters for the Scott pitching staff? I mean, what else can you say? I mean, when they're, they're scoring enough runs to get it done, when you got the kind of pitching like that, that's a recipe uh, for success, as we were saying. Uh, Jonathan, you got to love the way the Scots manufactured runs early in this one. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been great. I mean, all we saw out here was, you know, quick single by the leadoff guy, maybe a little bunt to advance him to second, maybe a little ground ball to the right side to advance him to third, a sack fly. I mean, whatever. They've just been scoring runs. They haven't been doing it with, you know, home runs or anything like that, but they've just been... They've been getting your, you know, your baseball nerd runs. All, just all around solid baseball. Scott's uh, getting the excellent pitching, timely hitting, and the defense has been sensational. And the Scots with their fifth win of the district season, and now they're really putting themselves in position playoff-wise. Next up for Highland Park, it'll be Wiley High at Scotland Yard. We'll have it for you here on HPTV. For Miles Dunklin and Jonathan Cantor, I'm Art Finley and the rest of our HPTV crew saying good night everybody. See you next time with more Scott Baseball. Hi, I'm Amy Harvey, the head of entertainment at HPTV. <laughs> we would like to thank our current sponsors at the moment. And if you or someone you know is interested in sponsoring, contact Kelly Snowden. Snowdeck at hpisd.org. That's S-N-O-W-D-E-K at hpisd.org. Thank you.